Hello everyone, welcome back to Prince and Nicholas channel. Thank you for joining us today. Today's video we're going to talk you through the process of laying DPM as well as explaining to you the importance of this process and how to lay DPC, what the difference is between them and the different specifications that's available. Firstly, I'd like to give a huge warm welcome to all the new subscribers that's joined us recently. We have noticed you and we see you in the comments and we want to give you a warm welcome. I also want to say thank you to all the long-standing viewers that we've had. Um, give us a shout out in the comments, let us know you're still there and interact with us. Um, we see you liking and commenting but it's nice, nice to speak to you regularly. Guys, before we get into this video, I just want to speak about the last video that we up that uploaded two days ago. Um, we noticed when it's on the large screen or uploaded, there's some pixel problems. It's only for the first two to three minutes. So after that, the video's footage is clear. Um, so thank you for those of you who have watched it. Um, I do encourage you to watch it, even if you skip past the two minutes. There's some real great imagery and content on the new building project that we're doing. So thank you for those who have watched it and we have found a solution to get the vi videos from on the ground in Ghana to us without those um, loss of quality. So we have found a solution to that. So thank you for joining us. I do want to encourage you all to stick to the video throughout as there's a number of informations through that. Whilst we have a lot of you that are in the current process of building your homes and we've had lots of um, great interactions, we are mindful that there's quite a lot of you that have reached out for um, support on your own building projects, whether that be design process or also in terms of the starting of your building. So a lot of the new followers are at the early stages of the process. What I want to do is help you guys to understand as well the key considerations to make sure that you don't have issues on the long term. You do see um, a lot of homes that have damp problems and what we want to do is try to mitigate that by making sure that when you're doing your foundation that you put in the right procedures to make sure that that's not going to happen. So this video will take you through that process. If you do have any additional questions drop a comment below and we will try to help guide you and give you the answers that you have. You'll probably notice that it's just me on the sound today. I'm sitting here in the nice British summer here trying to do the voiceover for you. Um, Prince is here, is in the room in the background working on the ground on the new um, projects and clients that we've recently had. So he's working hard. So give him a shout out and encourage him also in the comments because he's, he's trying his best to help all you guys on your new projects to build the quality home that you want. Prince, give a shout out. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Yes, he's, he's here in the room. So he's listening to my voiceover. So, okay, guys. So what I wanted to do first is run you through... Um, once you've done your foundation block work and filling in, you'll see on the screen here an image of the DPM and also details on the specifications. As you can see on the screen, there's the details of the different specifications that you can purchase for the DPM. This particular one, as you can see, is a really good quality. It's nice and thick. Now, when you're doing your foundation and filling in, what we always say is that you need to make sure that you put some sand blending on the top of that before you start putting the DPM down. You do need about 50 to 75 mils, um, but make sure you look at the engineer specifications for your particular details and you put the sand blending down before you layer the DPM. For our DPM, we use the 1200 gorge one. But you can look on the table and it will tell you for your particular project what you need. This product is available to be purchased in Accra and it can be delivered to your site. One of the key important details when laying your DPM 
is that you don't walk over the product itself. So as you're doing your foundation, you need to lay it in sections to prevent the wheelbarrow from damaging it. You need to overlap the joints and use particular DPM tape to the joints to make sure that there's no leakage or anything from underneath. One of the reasons why I produced this video is I want to make sure that if you're at this stage in your building project that you understand the importance of using DPM as well as DPC. The reason why you need to use both is that DPM is there for preventing moisture rising through the ground up into the slab and causing problems. Now, once you have your concrete slab there, it's really important that you put your DPC on the first course of block work. The reason for that is that as the slab is there and it's cold, it can produce moisture. And what we don't want is the moisture to rise up into the block work, which will create um, rising damp problems in the future. So that's the reason why you need to have both DPM and DPC on the ground floor of your building project. I would like to, at this point, signpost you and your foreman to the Ghana building code. Um, when you're building from a distance, you do need to know what's the rules and regulations back home in Ghana and to make sure that you're getting the quality products that you're purchasing for and that you're following the guidelines. As you can see on your screen here, this is our own particular building project and you can see that the concrete floor slab has been cast and the DPM is under there and if you look you can see the ground floor level is significantly lower than that. That enables us to have planned well to make sure that once we do the filling in there is no problems there but I will take you through that process later on in the video. With our particular foundation casting we wanted to ensure that we had a real good strong slab so we had the engineer Nelson come to test the concrete to make sure that we achieved what we wanted in the paperwork that we had. As I mentioned earlier there's a real importance for your damp proof course being put before you lay your first course of blocks. This is to prevent moisture rising and causing problems with rising damp in the future. There is a process for laying damp proof course to make sure that it's done correctly and I'm going to take you through this process now. Thank you all for sticking with me. If you're liking the content so far do give me a like and a comment just to let me know that this content is um, helpful for you. Um, give us a subscribe if you're not already doing so. So as I take you through this process there's a number of steps to make when you're laying DPC. The first thing you need to do as you see on the screen is that you need to prepare the surface and cut the material to size before laying mortar on the concrete. Once you've got the mortar on the concrete what you then need to do is lay the DPC that you've cut to size on the top of the mortar before putting more mortar on top of the DPC. Once this is completed, you then lay your block on top of that and then this process is correctly laid. This will stop any moisture rising into your first course and prevent any rising damp in the future. One thing I will say is when purchasing your block work, um, there are a number of um, pricing and quality out there. Um, just make sure that you consider what's going to be best for your project. Um, this, the ones that we've used here are very solid and we did have our engineer test them as well. And they're really good quality blocks. These particular blocks are quarry dust ones and they're really good quality. That takes you through the process of the DPM and DPC. There are a few considerations that I would like to mention to you so that you can make sure it is 
done correctly. Now, when you're completing the groundworks and the setting out, you need to take into consideration the ground level and, and how much filling you're going to be doing. The reason why I say this is when you're doing your filling, sometimes people don't always take into consideration um, that they need to ensure a minimum level of space between the filling in and below the DPM once completed. This is to ensure that the integrity of what you've done is in order. One of the other things that you need to make consideration for is that you need to think about the street level that's outside of your home. Is this street level going to be um, built up in the future? Are they going to build a road? You need to make sure that when they're building up a road, that's not going to take it higher to what your house is currently built at because that will cause flooding and it could not ensure that your house is being future-proofed. So make sure that you consider that in the future when you're doing your project. As you can see on the video here, you can see the DPM hanging out from underneath the concrete slab and all this materials that's on the ground will be leveled out before we make sure that the, there is the minimum level below the um, DPM once we do the filling. The minimum level and is also in the Ghana building code, so do take a look at that. It's really important that you make sure that you follow that and consider your own area where you're building. The process of future-proofing your home from damp but also floods starts from the setting out and even the design process to make sure you get the, the correct planning in place. I do hope you found this video helpful today. Um, thank you for joining me. Do hit me a uh, comment below and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you.